If you are widowed or you are close to someone who is widowed, then this video is for you because I'm going to be addressing some of the questions that I never would have thought to ask. I'm Debbie Morton and two years ago, my husband passed away unexpectedly on a hike and overnight, my world was turned completely upside down. And if you are going through grief or you know someone who is going through grief, you know that no one can prepare you for this and everyone's journey is different. In this video, I'm going to be answering some of the questions that we never think will come up and they're questions that quite often our loved ones will ask us and they're questions that we ask ourselves and in that state of widow's fog, in that state of just feeling fuzzy, not being able to think straight, feeling overwhelmed, the littlest things can just seem like a major hurdle and they're very, very emotional. Knowing that when John passed away, that I had a new chapter to write in my book of life, I wanted to get started writing that chapter as quickly as possible. And I know that John would have expected nothing less of me. So I sold everything that I own. And currently I am traveling around the world, creating new adventures and seeing incredible places. And if you have watched any of the other videos on this channel, you know that I share not only my journey through grief, but also my travel adventures. And if you'd like to follow along in that journey, then I invite you to hit the subscribe button like this video and if you have any questions or comments please leave them below here's a question that was a real struggle for me it is the question of how long should someone who is widowed wear their wedding ring and first i'll share with you what i did and then i'll share what will be the right answer for you for me I wore my ring on my left. I continued to wear my ring on my left hand for about five months. And then I started moving it to my other hand and I would wear it on my right hand. And the reason I switched it was I wanted to take some dance classes. It was a way of getting me out of the house and I do love to dance. John and I used to like to dance together. And when I went to the dance classes after the class, there was like a free dance session where everybody could dance with, with other people. And I was sitting there and I heard two gentlemen next to me saying, there's no one here to dance with. And I'm sitting there like, what about me? And it triggered me. I allowed it to trigger me. And, and I had a good cry as the result of it. And then I thought about it and I thought, I have a wedding ring on my hand. They have no idea. I don't talk. I wasn't talking about my husband's passing because I want relationships with people to be, to be not predicated on my husband's passing or them feeling sorry for me. So I never brought it up at class. And so then I thought, well, <laughs> I'm over here wearing a wedding ring. Of course, they're not asking me to, they don't even know, like, where's my husband? Why is he not here? And, and so, and I don't know if that's what was going through their mind or not, but it was what occurred for me. And so that was when I switched my ring to my right hand. And then once I did that, it was a little easier to not wear it at all. So here is the answer for you. How long should you wear your wedding ring after your spouse passes away? And the right answer to that is, however long you want to wear your wedding ring after your spouse passes away. If you want to take it off immediately because it's too painful to look at, then take it off immediately. If you want to wear it for the rest of your life, then wear it for the rest of your life. If you want to make it into a necklace, if you want to melt it and create some other piece of jewelry out of it, there is no right or wrong answer. There is only the right answer for you. So don't feel pressured by anyone or anything that you might read. The answer lies within you. You wear your ring as long as you want to wear that ring. Another question that often comes up, not only in your own mind, but in the minds of your loved ones, your friends, your family that is around you is, are you ever going to date again or will you ever remarry? 
And for two years after John passed, I had zero interest in dating. For the first year, I was really busy selling everything that I own, preparing for my travels around the world. I didn't want to be involved in a relationship that I was going to leave. And while I did have male friends, I did things with, it was not dating. And then the second year after John's passing, I was actually too busy traveling and having fun and creating this YouTube channel so that I could share my journeys with you. And although I've dated on occasion, there was never anything really serious. What I will say is that may be changing. What I do want to share is what is the right answer for you? The right answer for when to date again is whenever you want to date again. Maybe you've been on a journey with a, a very ill, terminally ill spouse, and you've been in the grieving process for many months or maybe even many years then you may want to date right away and that's okay. If you never want to date again in your entire life, then it is okay to never date again in your entire life. There is no wrong answer. There is no right answer. There is only what's right for you because our journeys are all different. Another question that is going to come up is, do you remain in the house where you're living now or do you relocate? And for some people, they want to stay in the house where all of the memories were created and their life is already in such turmoil. Why upset it even more? Others want to immediately downsize. It could be because of financial reasons. It could be they, they just want to start their next chapter and start creating their new life that they're going to have to do anyways. And then sometimes there's a question of maybe moving back to being around family or close friends. And so where you're going to live is a question that does come up. And here's something that I want to address. Many grief counselors, the gurus in the grief industry, whoever the gurus are, I heard this a lot right after John passed away. Don't make any major decisions for one year after your spouse passes. And I wanna address that, that comment. When a loved one passes away, as far as I'm concerned, every decision that you have to make is a major decision. Your life has been changed in a major way, every aspect of it, your circle of friends, the things that you do, your schedule, your routine, the person that you are in love with is gone, and so every decision that you are making is major. And I, I feel like some people postpone getting into their next chapter because they're afraid of making any major decisions, even though they're having to make them anyways. I made the decision to sell everything that I owned just two months after John passed away. And from the time I made that decision, I went public with it. And I started sharing with my Facebook audience. I started sharing with my friends. I started selling stuff to the point where there was like no return from this. Now it was an additional 10 months. So it was one year from his passing to the time I actually hit the road. But the decision was made and me getting to the point of no return was, was early on. And I was 100% focused on that next chapter of my life. If I had listened to the advice of the gurus, if I had sat back and thought to myself, oh, I'd love to travel the world and live out of my timeshares and I would love to go and enjoy life again, but I probably should wait for one year because selling everything and leaving my house is a pretty major decision. I would have lost one year of the incredible adventures that I've been on for this past year. I would have sat in a house that I didn't want to live in without my husband. And I would have been there unhappy trying to figure out what my new routine was. And even though I was there for that year, my, my routine was nothing like what it was going to be forever. My routine was just trying to get rid of everything and figure out how I am going to live the life of a nomad. Should you make any major decisions within 
the first year, here's what I will say. Don't allow yourself to be pressured into something within a year. Maybe you have loved ones or family or kids and they're like really putting a lot of pressure on you to sell and move closer to them. And maybe it's a way of them going through the grief also of their parent. I would say take the time in that situation. If you're feeling pressured, don't make any major decisions if you're feeling pressured to make that decision. That being said, if there's some major things that you wanna do, if you wanna move, if you wanna completely redecorate the house, if there's some major decisions that you want to make, major decisions being you're going to date again, whatever those major decisions are, do what makes you happy. And don't listen to someone telling you that you shouldn't make that major decision for an entire year. Being widowed is really, really difficult. And I get that. When a spouse passes away, the pages for the rest of your life, that, that book of life that we all have, those pages have now been wiped clean and they have to be rewritten. And here's the thing, you get to choose how and when and what to write for your next chapter. And if you don't choose, a decision is made for you because you're living your life no matter what. And so know that you can make the choice of what that next chapter can look like. And, and your book of life doesn't have to have a sad ending. It might have a sad right now, but it doesn't have to be sad forever. The pain is inevitable. Choosing to suffer for years or choosing to stay stuck, and maybe it's because there is a certain, there is a certain amount of attention and love and understanding that you get as you are in that process of suffering, it's still a choice. It's a choice for you to stay in that place. It is a choice for you to say, the pages of my next chapter are empty. Starting today and moving forward, I have a clean slate. What do I want my life to look like? What do I want to do? What dreams do I want to still fulfill? You can write whatever you want for the next chapter of your life. A few months after John passed away, I was on a trip. I went to Malta with a friend. And while I was touring one of the, the museums there, I saw a painted sign. And the sign said, you are stronger than you think you are. And you never know how strong you are until strength is your only option. And I will say for anyone who is on the journey of grief, and whether it is grief for your spouse or it's grief because you lost a job or you lost a loved one, I hope that this video has been helpful for you. You are stronger than you think you are, and you have the ability to write your next chapter. If this video has been helpful for you, like, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free. And I invite you to travel along in my journeys around the world. I've got some pretty cool trips coming up on Thursday. Actually, just a few days from now, I'm going to be heading to Europe and going on a 21 day North Atlantic cruise. And I'll be sharing some videos about that. So if you'd like to, to follow along in some of my travels, live vicariously through me, if you can't travel, or if you want to get some ideas for maybe where you want to take your next trip, then I invite you to follow along. I'm happy to have you as a part of my community and let's go travel the world.